of the things we get asked to provide a lot here at Dicebreaker is RPG recommendations for beginners. Whether it's somebody looking to get into pen and paper role playing games for the first time, or convince a reluctant friend to try the hobby, or as is quite often the case, something friendly for children, there's always somebody on the lookout for a beginner friendly role playing game. Now, there's no shortage of role-playing games aimed at newcomers to the hobby, but you can trust me on this one. Quest has a good shot at becoming the definitive RPG for first-time players. And that's not something I say lightly. For one thing, the book itself is gorgeous, with art from Grim Wilkins, Mariana Learmonth, and Kevin Sotek. It's littered with beautiful digital paintings showing colourful vistas, illustrating game concepts like being in reach for melee attacks, or near enough to reach an enemy in one turn, and there's even a picture of a giant bear getting its face smashed off. As lovely as the art is, however, the first thing that really grabbed me about Quest were the opening words. Welcome friend, this is a special place, a retreat from your worries and obligations. Now close your eyes, take a deep breath, and open your mind. Ready? Let's begin. And if that isn't just a brilliant summary of what tabletop RPGs have to offer people, and how best to approach them as a player, then frankly, I don't know what is. From the outset, Quest establishes itself as a friendly, welcoming game that promises much, but crucially, reassures the reader that they aren't going to be overtaxed, or worse, left in the hinterlands of a dense rulebook, and left to fend for themselves. There's even a reassuring guide to the contents page. The different sections are clumped into what they mean for the reader. First, we'll teach you how to play the game, it says. Second, you'll create a unique character with a backstory, a dream, and a role to play. Third, you'll prepare your character with special abilities and equipment. What a lovely thing to have! I mean, put it this way, never before in my life have I felt compelled to talk about a contents page during a review, and yet, here I am, frittering away precious seconds of my mortal life, doing just that. And also, they aren't afraid of the Oxford comma, which, for me at least, is an extra special treat. The rules of Quest, as you might expect by this point, are delightfully simple. As the game says itself, you are an adventurer in a world of magic and danger. Find some friends, and don't forget the snacks. Say what you do, then find out what happens. Mechanically, everybody in Quest rolls on a d20. A 20 is a triumph, allowing you to succeed heroically and deal double damage, if applicable. Between 11 and 19, it's a success. Normal damage, no bad consequences. A 6 to 10 is where things start to get interesting, as that is a tough choice. You succeed in your action, but with a setback. The Games Master, or Guide as Quest terms them, gives the player a choice between two negative consequences, and they pick one to have happen. Meanwhile, if you roll a 2, 3, 4, or 5, that's a failure. The action fails, and the Guide chooses the setback suffered, whether that's losing equipment, taking damage, or some other consequence. And then finally, a 1 is referred to as a catastrophe. This is a critical failure, potentially bringing with it severe consequences. And that is the entire dice system. Everyone's going to be rolling from this same rule set, so you don't have to worry about adding proficiency bonuses, or stat modifiers, or racial traits, or any of that. And with success coming in from just a 6 up on a d20, albeit with consequences, players have a pretty high chance of success. Obviously, rolling on a d20, the exact degree of success is going to vary quite a lot from one roll to the next, especially without any of the modifiers you'd expect from other RPGs. However, I really feel like this is a trade-off for the simplicity of the system, and quite frankly, it works. If anything, it's kind of handy to teach new players about how unpredictable dice rolls can be, and how that capricious aspect is one of the best things about tabletop RPGs. But Johnny, I hear you cry, if we're all rolling the same unmodified die, aren't our characters going to be identical? No, they aren't, I reply. Let's talk about character creation, because it is my favourite thing about Quest by a country mile. It's fast, it's intuitive, and it gives you a sense of self and purpose in minutes where other games ask hours. And better yet, your character sheet even serves as an introductory speech for your character as they join the party. Hello, my name is Name Goes Here, followed by pronouns. 
I'm age, years old, and stand height, tall. I'm the party's role. In quest there are eight to choose from. Fighter, invoker, ranger, naturalist, doctor, spy, magician, and wizard. When people see me, they first notice my distinctive feature, second distinctive feature, and third distinctive feature. I wear clothes, clothes, and move with adjective. I'm from place name, where my people are known for something about the community. I believe in an ideal, but my floor side can get in my way. I dream of dream and carry, and at this point you fill out what you carry with a separate character inventory sheet. It's as simple as that. It's a really elegant piece of design and I am massively into it. If you're not feeling especially inspired, there are suggestions for all of these segments to help get your imagination firing. The ideal you believe in, for example, could be compassion, or pragmatism, or every rogue's favourite, the ends. This one is described specifically as you don't care what it takes as long as you get where you're going. It means, if you're willing to just go with your gut, that you can whip up the core concept of a character in just a couple of minutes, complete with a physical description, ideals, wants, flaws, pretty much everything. All that's left for you to do is pick your gear and also your abilities, which is where the characters really come into their own. When you make a new character and pick a role, you choose six abilities to have at your disposal while adventuring. Some of these are free abilities, some can be activated once per game session, and others are paid for using AP or adventure points. Abilities are particular to each role, and some of them are organised into set paths, with abilities unlocked in sequence. The fighter has a dueling path, for example, that unlocks in order from counter-attack to the mighty duel ability. With most of the powers costing just one or two of your ten starting AP, these abilities are meant to be used quite a lot. So while everyone's roles are effectively the same, the abilities really make you feel like you're playing a character with unique talents and a specific build. Better yet, you unlock a new ability at the end of each session, so characters are always progressing as they move about the game world. There are even legendary abilities on offer, should you get that far. So that's how Quest handles for players, but what about the guide? Does the person running the game need prior experience, even if their players have never so much as seen an RPG before this one? The good news is, no. Quest is every bit as accessible to the guide as it is to the players. For one thing, the guide section is mostly about getting into the right mindset. Setting the scene, listening to players and responding, trying to make things as exciting as possible, and, most importantly, making sure everyone's boundaries are respected. Where the players get character sheets, the guide gets a world profile. It's similarly straightforward, offering you a series of blanks to fill in as you set the parameters for how magical the region is, how dangerous it is, and what daily life is like for its inhabitants. It also gives you an opportunity to set an adventure hook. Reading this out to players before you jump in, it's easy to set the tone and give them a quiet nudge in the right direction before the action proceeds as it might in any other tabletop RPG. Again, if you're feeling uninspired or you just want some ideas to bounce off, the game has a healthy roster of suggestions for each space on the profile. In terms of preparation, the game also offers a decent amount of extra stuff to keep the action ticking over without the guide having to do too much homework. There's a treasure deck, for example, containing all sorts of weird and wonderful items for players to accumulate and use on their adventures. Personally, I found that really helpful, as coming up with interesting loot, especially on the fly, is something I sometimes struggle with. It takes a bit of time to get used to offering two negative consequences for the players to pick from when they roll between 6 and 10, but really, that was my only major stumbling block when running the game. So hopefully you can see that Quest is as much a love letter to RPGs as it is an RPG in its own right. This is a game designed to introduce a set of core concepts that other games do in greater detail and, in many cases, with greater sophistication, but it does so with such a welcoming and open-handed approach that it's difficult not to be charmed.
It may be easy to forget once you've got a few sessions or the odd campaign under your belt, but starting a pen and paper role-playing game for the very first time can be really intimidating. I still remember my first session because I was absolutely terrified. Something like Quest, however, really does help give players the best possible start. So it's elegant and it's beginner friendly and it's gorgeously illustrated, but how does it actually play? Well, thankfully, it's very good fun. <laughs> With its light rule set, it's a very freeform game, but there's still enough substance there to resemble a more traditional RPG. It allows people to try and initiate action without worrying too much about the mechanics or a complex rule set, which, for new players, is absolutely ideal. Amusingly enough, this aspect of Quest actually proved to be something of a stumbling block for my more experienced players. It seemed like they were suddenly a bit intimidated, having been freed from a more rigid stat block which gives you skills like riding and shooting and investigate and persuade and intimidate, and so on and so forth. That was only temporary, mind you, and things quickly progressed from there. If there's anything I think might give more experienced players pause, or cause them to dismiss Quest out of hand, in fact, it's the vague sense that they might be playing a game for children, like it might somehow be beneath them. And to those people I say, sh 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 da 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 da. everybody knows you're very clever and experienced, but let's face it, if you're still happy reading Harry Potter and arguing about what house you'd be in, you're not too good for Quest. Because no, Quest isn't a game specifically for children. It's great for children, absolutely, but I think it's really good for adults too. It's a game that can be taught in no time at all, and the character creation is so intuitive there's practically no danger of anybody ending up with a character that doesn't quite work with what they originally imagined. Would it keep a group of adults playing week in, week out for months or maybe even years? No. Probably not. After a while, they probably would want to find something more complex in order to stretch those newly found RPG muscles. However, were that to happen, I wouldn't really consider that to be a failing of the game. Rather, in those instances, I think it could be said that Quest has done its job. Quest is a launch pad. It's a gateway RPG. It's not designed to be played for years, but it is designed to be intuitive and memorable. Like I said before, it's a love letter to RPGs on the whole, and you know what? I think it's beautiful. So yeah, that's Quest. I think it's smashing. Anyway, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, there are loads more from Dicebreaker for you to watch. Some of them should be popping up on screen now. Do like, subscribe, and ring the bell icon so you don't miss anything else from us. Visit dicebreaker.com, and most importantly, have a lovely day.